If there's one feature you can introduce to your garden to help wildlife, this is it, a garden pond. Almost regardless of how large a patch you have, introducing a bit of still water absolutely transforms your garden in terms of its value to living things. Uh, one of the things you should be thinking about is making sure all creatures have access to this resource, to the water. Make sure there are sloping banks, make sure it's not steep sided with, with nasty steep bricks to stop things getting in or more importantly out. If a hedgehog falls into a pond and it can't escape it's going to drown. So it's got to be a place where creatures from the land can come and drink but also look at what might be under the surface. I'm going to have a pond dip. I haven't even dipped my net in this. I can't be sure but I'll, I'll put money on the fact there are going to be some goodies in here. Let's just try. Okay, we have life. Come and have a look. First scoop, all sorts of goodies. Right, let's tip it in the tray. And we'll... Here we go. Oh, look, that's nice. I can straight away see something. Oh, two exciting, three exciting things. Woohoo! Right, see these little guys here? That is an eft. It's a baby newt. Then you've got a host of other creatures. You've got the, the pond snails. Other invertebrates, I can see freshwater shrimps in here and surface striders as well, pond skaters. And that's the first scoop, it's just crazy. Oh, and a damselfly larvae, see? You know, it's the first scoop, one scoop into the freshwater and it's just throbbing with life. It's a tremendous asset to your garden. And if you don't have a patch big enough to really go to town and build a pond of this sort of scale with a pond liner, you may do. In fact, honestly, if this was the size of my garden in its entirety, I'd probably dedicate it entirely to a pond. But if you don't, there are ways you can still introduce still water on a smaller scale. Good, so let's have a closer look at what we've got here. I had a few more dips, if I'm honest. In the tray, we've got the efts, that's the baby newts. We've got damselfly larvae. I think two different species, at least. We've got freshwater shrimps and pond snails. All of these playing different roles within the pond environment. Um, and then in this little tub, on one of the dips, I came up with uh, an adult newt, it's a female, and a bigger dragonfly larva, that's opposed to a damselfly. This, to me, looks like a larva of one of the libellula, that's the, the chasers. If you want to know what the detail of these creatures are, you can get very good books, but also these super little at-a-glance charts from the Field Studies Council that give you a really good broad overview of life in freshwater, especially in freshwater ponds. And at least you can narrow it down to families like dragonflies. Also, in terms of habitats around the pond, you might want to provide some cover and get these neat, neat little um, frogiloos. Uh, effectively a little ceramic pot but it's exactly the right size for a frog or a toad or other creature to find sanctuary and do remember that amphibians live up to their name they spend some of their life in the water a lot of their life on land and it, they couldn't be more useful in the garden frogs and toads and newts all come out at night foraging for invertebrates and that includes slugs and snails and other bugs that aren't necessarily the gardener's friend I mentioned earlier too, you don't need a massive space to get life in your garden with still water. And um, this is something actually I designed some time ago. It's a, it's a one-stop garden pond. It's, it's, um, it's not the cheapest pond on the market, I'm not pretending that it is, but that's for a lot of reasons, not least. It's, it's really robust, it's, land, it's built to look like real rock, so when it's in the ground it, it looks good, it looks the part. And actually you don't have to dig very deep or very much soil out of the way. It's absolutely designed so that you dig just enough to take this bucket shape here and this wee bit of the planter. Not a huge hole in the, in the ground. And then part of it stays above water with this lip, which in itself offers a habitat. You've got a shallow area for putting a little bit of gravel and you get marsh plants, deep area for life generally, and these planters for putting emergent vegetation. It's a short dig, pop it in the ground, leave it be, and boom, if you build it, life will come.